G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. A new year, a new haircut, and a chance to discuss what the future holds in regards to what am I doing with F mount versus Z mount. Yes, indeed, I've had a few questions in the comments now that the Z9 has arrived. Matt, what are you going to do with all of your F mount gear? And I think this is a great question. I also think it's an opportunity for all of us to think about what are we going to do in regards to mirrorless? Are we going to stay in DSLR or move to mirrorless or do a bit of both? That's what I've been doing for the last three years. What are you going to do? <laughs> Now in 2022, I believe that we have reached a watershed moment in the camera industry. It's a time where all photographic manufacturers, except perhaps Pentax, are embracing and moving towards mirrorless at an ever increasing pace. As noted in a most recent video of mine, Canon have announced that they will not be producing any new flagship DSLRs. Indeed, they've said they may well continue with non-flagship DSLRs, but ultimately, from my perspective, the writing is on the wall when it comes to DSLRs. They are an old technology and mirrorless is coming at a great pace. Now, all of our use cases differ, and some of us believe that DSLR is still superior to mirrorless, and that's totally fine for your use case, that may well be 100% correct. But for the majority of users, mirrorless seems like the choice that we've already made, we're about to make, or will make in the not too distant future. So what does this mean for me? Well, I still have my two Nikon D850s. I also have my D4, my D3S, and a few other cameras lying around. Why have I held on to these cameras? And not only do I have the cameras, but I have a huge amount of F mount glass, including the Trinity, the latest version of the 24 to 70, the latest version of the 14 to 24, and the 70 to 200, amongst a whole lot of prime lenses, zoom lenses, tilt shift lenses, all sorts of lenses, I have a lot of F gear. Now, when did I last use my F mount gear for professional work? Well, the reality of that is, I think it's something like three years ago. And why have I held on to it? Well, I kind of think the main reason that I've held on to it is actually here for the channel, so I can continue to compare and understand what the old glass does versus the new glass. And segueing on from that point, I recently tested before I had to give back Nikon's Z9 a couple of my F lenses and Z lenses side by side. But the reality is, beyond doing testing for YouTube, there is absolutely no practical reason why I would keep my F mount gear. And I think really the only lenses that I haven't replaced yet is my 200 to 400 F4 and my tilt shift lenses. Now the 200 to 400 F4 could probably be replaced with the 100 to 400 that's just been released. And when it comes to the tilt shift lenses, well, they might be a little way off yet. It's very hard to say. And really they're not lenses that I badly need to have replaced with a modern version. I'm sure we could get better ones, but I'm personally in no rush. So theoretically I could sell absolutely all of my F-mount equipment, except for those couple of lenses that haven't been replaced yet, and it would have zero impact on my world. Now, of course, you might ask the question, why are you talking about this now? Well, with the arrival of the Z9, there is really absolutely now no reason in any use case 
why I would need to hold on to any of my F gear. But here's the thing, I wasn't using my F gear at all anyway. I used it recently in this video here to show off what the D4 and the 200 to 400 could do, but I haven't needed it for my professional work. So what's in my camera bag in 2022? Well, we have the Z9, of course. Here's the 24 to 70, 2.8 part of the Trinity. I do have the 14 to 24, 2.8, the 70 to 200, 2.8 along with almost all of the 1.8 primes. I have the 50mm 1.2, and I will be purchasing what I believe will be the 85mm 1.2 as well. And then beyond that, well, it will be really, really interesting to see what sort of lenses come out. I am not a 400mm 2.8 guy. I'd love to be, but I know that I probably wouldn't use it that much. Although, thank you to Thomas, thank you Thomas, I did learn something about that lens, which it is an extraordinarily cinematic lens and hmm, would be useful in some of my cinematic outings. So maybe there is a place for that lens in my world, but gosh, I suspect it's going to be very expensive. So yes, my camera bag is made up of the Z9 and all those lenses I talked about. And as well as the Z9 in bodies, I have the Z6, the Z6 II, the Z7, the ZFC, and the Z50. Some of those are mainly just for testing and not for everyday usage. And in 2022, I think we are only going to see a further expansion of how good the Z system and mirrorless systems in general are going to be. We may well see the Z8, whatever that is. And I feel pretty strongly that we're going to see the Z63 and the Z73. But I feel like if we're continuing to hit the two year cycle, that won't be until the end of this year. And we also could have another entry level camera in the Nikon Z space. So in my camera bag for my day to day usage, it is fully the Z system. I continue to own Sony gear, and a Hasselblad, which I look forward to getting out in future videos. So what will I do with my F mount system gear? And that's a really difficult question for me. As a working photographer, this equipment gets depreciated, amortized, paid off very, very quickly when you're a working photographer. And all of this F mount gear that I have talked about has been amortized over more than the last decade or so. So from an accounting perspective, it has no value. And from a channel perspective, well, it may continue to have some value. But I do think as every day, every month, every week passes, that value is probably diminishing exponentially. So I do think I might start to look at moving on some if not most of my F mount system. It's taking up space in a room that is ever filling up with more and more equipment. And well, I just don't use it that much. So I do think that 2022 could be the year that I finally let go of F mount. I'd love you to let me know in the comments below, how do you feel about F mount? How do you feel about Z mount? Of course, there are going to be lenses, F-mount lenses, that some of us hold on to because they're simply not available in Z-mount at the moment. And of course, with my testing, the uh, F-mount lenses with the Z system using the F to Z adapter, may it be one or version two like over here, lenses work just as well. And from my perspective, in some cases, they actually work better because we do get in-body image stabilization which you will not find on an F-mount camera. So they work as well, if not better. It does make the transition from F to Z very easy and very seamless because you can just move across as your budget affords. Buy yourself a good body and then move across more and more glass as time passes. That's certainly how it worked for me and it has been seamless and I've been able to do it at my own speed and there has been zero business interruption. 
So I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know how you're tracking. Have you fully moved? Have you let go of all of your F gear? Are you never going to let go of your F gear? I mean, that's another consideration for me. Do I just keep it because F mount has been part of my business life for pretty much all of it? 1992, almost, almost the entire 32 years. 30 of the 32 years F mount has been part of my world and helped me create thousands and thousands and thousands of images which have created the life that I have lived as a professional photographer. So my brain says, well, maybe sell and get a bit of cash. But my heart says, well, maybe put them in the mat museum. I don't know what's best in this day and age. And I certainly don't know what the future holds. We have interesting times ahead in 2022. Anyway, this is my little corner of the universe. This is my opinion on what I'm doing for my business and myself. I'd love to know what you're doing. It's been so good to see you. And look, if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe. Please share and please like. I look forward to seeing you soon. This year is going to be different, I hope. I hope we have the freedom to get out and create more of what we all want to create. What I say is, hopefully, fingers crossed, no more lockdowns. See you soon. I'm really looking forward to it. Bye for now.